If you get the full mm. set, it's like a thousand dollars. We have yeah, the full so, set. Oh, so you're rich, rich. No, I'm just kidding. No, we <laughs> wedding um, registry. I know did a wedding registry. Well, we didn't, but <laughs> we we said give us money so we can go to Scandinavia. Rich girl roundup. Welcome back, rich girls and boys, to the Rich Girl Roundup weekly discussion of the Money with Katie show. I'm your host, Katie Gaddy Tossan, and every week, Hannah and I will break down an interesting money discussion. And starting last week, we decided to move our weekly upload to Mondays, just in case you need a little something something for your commute. All right, now before Hannah and I get into it today, I would love if you would allow me to build some anticipation and suspense about this Wednesday's full episode of the show, because it asks the question, are most millionaires actually self-made? We also talk about Nepo babies, meritocracy, and why a certain billionaire seems so hellbent on staying in the news cycle. And I am pumped. Okay, on to the roundup. Henna, how are we doing today? We're okay. Uh, I'm back from vacation, which I know you desperately missed me. So how are you? <laughs> Happy to have you back um, and excited to talk to you about this topic. I think you're going to have an interesting perspective. Yeah. So today's question from Megan M was mm -hmm. about switching to off-brand providers of certain things, like using a product like Mint Mobile, which was recently acquired by T-Mobile, instead of a traditional cell phone carrier like Verizon or AT&T. I actually have Mint Mobile, so I do feel uniquely qualified to uh, <laughs> talk about this one. But sure. before I go on my diatribe about Mint Mobile, had any initial thoughts to share? Yeah, I... I'm someone who obviously uh, cares a lot about money. And so sometimes I also spend a lot of time looking for like off-brand or dupe products where I can save dupe. a buck. Uh, dupe. dupe. <laughs> and so I think that there's a very fine line between you get what you pay for and lifestyle creep. And I think this is a really interesting uh, experiment to be doing um, because I think in some ways you can have shortcuts that – add up quickly and they, they make sense but I think you can also have shortcuts or dupes dupes uh where you <laughs> you kind of have these long-term <laughs> effects too so like for example um I think with skincare like this is your face and you will have it for the rest of your life and so I do think that it's like worth investing in your skin and hang a little bit more to invest in that and but that's I think, but that's see that's the that's the hard part right though is that, that like yes you don't know am i paying for like the brand or am i paying for the totally. fact that there's actually quality ingredients that are going to work for me and i feel like that's where the discernment has to come in um it's not always like well you know you kind of said it it's it's not always that you're getting what you pay for sometimes you're you're paying a lot more than you would need to you kind of talk about this as like the sweet spot of quality and price and so you yeah. personally have mint mobile so i want to hear about your experience because we have t-mobile and mm. obviously they just acquired mint mobile and so i also have been like hmm is this hmm. worth making the shift so can you talk well. a little bit about that I sure can. I switched to Mint Mobile in late 2021 and I had Sprint before. So like, it's not like I was rocking some premium wireless, if you know what I mean. I already had like a not super fantastic carrier, but I was encouraged by the fact that I think at the time Mint Mobile actually used the cell towers of Sprint and T-Mobile or maybe mm. just one. I honestly don't really remember. I think Sprint and T-Mobile have merged too. I don't know. m and love it. Go USA. But um, it was $360 one time for the year, which works out to $30 a month for unlimited everything. And to me, it is like the quintessential example of sweet spot of quality and price where you're really paying for value because it's it, I've literally noticed no difference between my service. I actually often have, my husband is still on his like family's family plan. So we don't have a family plan together. I think he is AT&T. There have been several times where um, he hasn't had service and I have. And mm. I've kind of been like, oh, I'm actually kind of surprised because typically those like legacy carriers are the ones that you associate with good service and they typically are pretty expensive. So yeah, I think for me, this whole situation, like to uh, confirm that Mint Mobile is a good product, I can definitely do that. I have not looked back, but I also think that this question gets at that larger, 
that larger discussion of the sweet spot of quality and price. Are you paying for a brand name or are you paying for the quality of the materials and solid craftsmanship or like sustainable production? So I always think of the designer goods example because I have purchased a Louis Vuitton bag in my life, regrettably, and I don't even think it's made of real leather. Like, I actually think it's made of canvas. And it was, what, $1,300? I mean, it was pretty inexcusably expensive. But my mom has a coach bag from, like, the 80s that is real leather. And I couldn't have been more than $200, I mean, at the time. But she still carries it to this day. And Mm -hmm. it's in great Mm -hmm. condition. So I do think that, you know, when I think about designer goods especially, think that's when you get into the realm of yes sometimes you might be paying for better materials but much of the time you're paying for the label or the logo yeah I think that makes a lot of sense I think there's a lot there's a lot of situations in which generic it, it makes no difference if you do generic or otherwise I think with specific medicines generic can make a lot of sense it'll save you a ton of money um, I think sometimes like gym memberships if you're just getting what you need and you're able to get out like you don't need to pay for the equinox equinox whatever million branded dollar membership. gym <laughs> um but then there are also obviously like i was saying some shortcuts where it does really make a difference so like fast fashion i think is a big one that you really do get what you pay for with clothing but i think that there's certain things that like really make a lot of sense to stay on brand as well um i think it's interesting because in your notes you wrote about like all clad and my pants I, yes pants which like I can't believe I'm talking about this with excitement. This is my 30s, I guess. I So when we were getting married, I looked at every sort of review you could imagine about like, should I really buy all clad or should I just go for like the DTC, like trend, trendy uh, cookware? And there's and a lot of them. There are a lot of a trendy lot. DTC cookware brands. And it's interesting that you're, that you're saying like you were debating between the two because I also noticed that the trendy DTC brands with like, the millennial pink branding and the cool fonts are just as expensive in many cases. I mean, even if it was a sizable difference, right? Like I was reading like wire cutter. I was reading Cena. I was reading like yeah. every sort of review I could find. And at the end of the day, it just, there wasn't enough longevity in a lot of these brands to qualify it being worth the price. Whereas all clad has been around for a million years or whatever. So that's what we ended up putting on our registry and we've had it and we love it. But I think at the end of the day, could I have probably found something that was a little bit less expensive? Yeah, but do I feel like I've now it's gonna made this, like... It's going to last for a really long yeah, time. Yeah, it's going to last for the rest of our lives. And especially if, if you're going to cook every night. Like, that was what I... I finally just invested in my first one. And if you get the full mm-hmm. set, it's like $1,000. We, we have yeah, the full so, set. Oh, so you're rich, rich. No, I'm just kidding. No, we... <laughs> wedding um, registry, I know. Did a wedding registry. Well, we didn't. But <laughs> we, we said, give us money so we can go to Scandinavia. But, um... Yeah, so we, I got the 10-inch pan, and the reason I ended up getting it is because we had those, like, Target pans, which in my very frugal days, I was like, oh, who cares? This is good enough. But you know what was really freaky is that, you know how Teflon is, like, low-key very much a carcinogen? Like, you, the, it, yes. like, comes off the pan. This is and science with Katie and Hannah, yes. Leeches into your food. I was noticing little black specks yeah. in the food, and I was like, oh, I cannot justify this like this is ridiculous and so I finally was like okay I'm just gonna get like one good 10 inch and I did the same thing read all the reviews I was like I want to invest in a good quality pan I don't want to pay for the branding I don't want to pay for like the fancy logo or the recognizable whatever I just want to get like the straight up best pan that I can have forever that's gonna cook food really well and same thing, all clad just kept coming up. And you know when you know a brand is good, it's when it's expensive as shit, but the website is like kind of ugly and like the branding is like not sexy. You're Did like, you- oh, this is some good stuff right here. Did you watch Success- Succession's uh, season premiere? No, so don't, no spoilers, please. I won't spoil anything, but there's this like running meme that's happening online right now about this date that one of them goes on and, or like comes to an event with the family and they have this comically large Burberry bag that's been making the rounds and the reason that the meme has been going around is like this person was trying to fit in with the ultra elite by having this brand name item but if you're ultra elite the idea is to have off-brand logo list items like that is the ultimate that's like the ultimate like, stealth wealth flex. Yes, that's yeah. the ultimate status. So I think this is a really funny conversation because mm-hmm. off-brand you could do 
for money reasons to save money or because you're trying to not show that you have money. Yeah, you're like um, conferring the ultimate status. That's really interesting. There was a funny tweet about that that went around where it was like, um, rich yells wealth whispers or something where it was showing the differences between like the fancy flashy watch that like rich people have versus like the far more expensive watch you've never heard of that like so yeah anyway all clad is the far more expensive $99 <laughs> pan but I we've we've named like we call him pan like capital p proper noun pan and I love him I'm like obsessed but so that that is kind of it came to mind when we were talking about this topic because you know I just didn't want to spend a bunch of money on on the brand name and I think that in a lot of cases like you you really have to and wire cutters are great is a great resource for that. There are a lot of good resources online for kind of digging beneath the surface, even like Reddit. Like you can find really good yeah. reviews for stuff Reddit, on Reddit where people YouTube. are not being compensated to talk about it. Well, Reddit, YouTube, like they all have these really honest reviews. I even, when I bought my couch, I watched a YouTube video about their experience. And so I do think that there can be really informative off-brand options and you have to like kind of dig dig a little bit below the surface to find out if it makes sense. But I think the larger question that I thought of too is like, is there a major life shift that kind of takes on-brand versus off-brand like totally out of the equation? Like, so for example, I am a toilet paper queen. Like I just love three-ply Charmin, you know. The I just, pandemic I, must have been so hard for you. It was really tough. Um, no, it actually wasn't because I had already stocked up on it. Uh, <laughs> you were the reason I... there were shortages. <laughs> <laughs> True. No, I'm just kidding. Um, but I think that like whether you're like, should I do the three ply or the one ply, whatever, like a bidet kind of gets rid of the whole question of like on brand, off brand, one ply. Like, so I just think that there's an, an, an secondary argument, perhaps. I do think that like your point about not caring so much about the brand itself and thinking about the actual quality use value craftsmanship materials like those are the things that I would think about rather than being like do I think that Verizon is going to have a better is it going to have better coverage than this like you can pretty much figure those out easily online and then you can kind of decide on the cost differential like is mm -hmm. having a branded provider more exciting to you and something you want to invest in but I don't think it has to be well, thanks for listening to this week's uh, Rich Girl Roundup discussion that started with Mint Mobile and then took a really winding road to many other places. Uh, we're happy that you were here and we will see you Wednesday for the full episode. 